And Mary was much perplexed by this greeting, really. Let's think about that for a moment. Um, how old was Mary when this happened? 12? 14? Who, who here, girls, who here is between 12 and 14? Stand up. I know there's more than one. Okay. So Mary would have been about the age of these girls. When the angel came to her and said, all right, you can sit down, thank you. When the angel came to her and said, greetings, favored ones. Now, I know how I would have reacted if the angel came. I would have been more than perplexed. I probably would have been running and screaming like a little girl, actually. Right? This is a story that we've heard over and over again, and we think we understand what we're trying to be told here, but it's a story that really doesn't make much sense when you think about it. It starts in the sixth month. Why is it the sixth month? Who was paying attention to the reading? Because it actually tells us later on in the reading. It's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Right. Elizabeth is Mary's aunt who is supposed to be barren. And she is having John the Baptist. And it is now the sixth month of her pregnancy in which she was not supposed to have children. So that's why it is the sixth month. And then the angel comes to, to Mary, who is a woman, a young girl who's engaged to be married. And he says, Gabriel says, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Okay. What would we do if that happens? Have you ever noticed that every angel, no matter how they start their sentences or they start their greetings, with Mary, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you, and then right away the angel says, Do not be afraid. <laughs> like I said, if an angel came to me and said anything, I'd be running like a little girl, screaming. But this would not be pretty. It'd be a scary thing, right, if an angel comes to you. And she's engaged to be married. And what is supposed to happen to her as an engaged woman to be married if she gets pregnant? She should be stoned to death, actually. Matthew tells us that when Joseph found out about it, Joseph was going to uh, silently break off the engagement so that not to bring shame to Mary. Um, I don't know how that would have actually worked out, but it's good that the angel came to visit Joseph and the Gospel of Matthew to tell him that this is what's happening, right? So that everything works out together. But the angel goes on then to tell her that she has found favor with God. Favor. It's an interesting word because it can be translated in a bunch of different ways. Basically what the angel is telling Mary here is that she is blessed by God. She has found a blessing from God. Isn't that an interesting thing to find? Mary found favor with God. Now, did God just leave it laying on the ground for her to discover? Or is it something that God actually handed to her or gave her? It's not the first. It wasn't just laying on the ground and Mary tripped over it as the angel gave her came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one, right? God blessed Mary. And why did God bless Mary? What did Mary do to deserve God's blessing? Nothing. To this point, she's done nothing. We've, in the Gospel of Luke so far, we've seen the angel visit Zechariah, Elizabeth get pregnant, and now we hear the angel Gabriel coming to Mary. Greetings, blessed, favored one. The Lord is with you. For you have found favor with God. And why? Because she's done nothing. She's done absolutely nothing to this point. Which begs the question, why did the angel even have to come and do all this to begin with? Meaning, did Mary actually have a choice in whether or not God was going to use her to bring Jesus to the world? Do any of us ever have a choice when God wants to use us 
to do something in the world? No. Take it from me. If you ever want to hear stories about it, come and ask me. I'll tell you. I've got long-winded stories. Long-winded stories. About running from God. Ask any pastor you know, and I guarantee you that their story of coming into being a minister, coming into the ministry, is going to have at least one, if not two, times where they said, yes, God has you to by for, or pat me upside the head and tell me this is what you're going to have to do. When God makes the decision to do something, God's going to do it in spite of us. God is going to do it. So did Mary have a choice? And doing this. No, I don't believe she did. Which which begs the question of do any of us have a choice in what God is calling us to do? Really none of us do. It's all in our attitude and how we understand who we are in God and how our lives are going to play out. You see the difference of one simple little sentence. One little simple sentence is one little simple word in Greek, actually. It's the word to do in Greek. And it's translated in our, in our translation this morning, which is the New Revised Standard Version, as here am I. Basically, it means see. It could also say here I am. And that's the difference. See, that one simple phrase of three words. If I say here I am, that means one thing. If I say, here am I, that can mean a totally different thing. Because I'm standing right here. And if I wanted you to come to me, I could say, here I am. Come to me. Or we could take the understanding that Mary has in the Gospel. Understanding the fact that she's blessed before she did anything, that God has seen her and saw her all of her life, knows who she is, and besides the fact that she's done nothing to gain God's favor, she's blessed by God. When God, when the angel Gabriel said to her, you're going to conceive the Son of God, she said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Servant is also the word for slave. Here am I the slave of the Lord. Let it be to me as the Lord has commanded. Here am I. It's like we have this offering for me sitting here. And here I'm going to step in. And here I'm going to Here am I. Use me as you can say. Use me the way that your plan is going to be set out to be. Use me to make your will be done here on earth. Mary didn't say, here I am. Let's do this. She opened herself up and offered herself to the plan that God had made before her and said, I may not like it. I can imagine as a 12-year-old girl who was engaged to be married, knowing that the blessing that she was about to receive would be a blessing that could also have her killed if her family and the neighborhood found out. Blessing that would have her running and hiding for months because she didn't want anyone to know that she was carrying a child that was not her husband. It's an interesting blessing, nonetheless. It is a blessing from God to bring about His action and His love in the world. And that's what God is asking each and every one of us to do. To not let our own plans be the plans that bring us to where we're at, but to look at what God is calling us to do. And to look back at God and go, Here am I. I'm your servant, ready to do whatever it is that you're calling me to do. Because I know no matter what happens, that you're always going to do it. And you're always going to give me the strength and the power to do it. So can you say, here and on, and all things are going to do that's what God really wants. And I guarantee you it will be a life that no one can ever imagine. Will be the most wonderful blessing that you ever have. Because God has already seen you and knows you. He blesses you simply because you are His child and His creation. So hand your life back to Him. Let Him make it.